Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scene tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your hosts, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Firm. Here is Lance, the main man psycho. Main man. Al, getting it done, Gore. Wow, I love it today. <laughs> That's what they call me. Uh, speaking of getting it done, Lance, you got any tips for that? Well, I'll tell you what. Are you well, still working? Are you or your firm still working remotely? Are the logistics of putting together a project daunting when no one is in the same room? I've got a solution for you. Heck, ArcCat has a solution for you. ArcCat's Charette allows you to manage project, project, projects and specification documents online with multiple team members, discuss products, configurations, outline specs, project photos, and documents, and more on one page. Along with the ability to access product information, specs, CAD, BIM, and the patented spec wizard from anywhere in the world, Charette can help your firm, that's right, you, get more done no matter where you are or the rest of your firm are. You can even promote your firm's project when you're done. That's right. And like all of our CAT solutions, it's completely free to use. So check out check out rcat.com forward slash projects. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com forward slash projects. Awesome. Uh, if you're an architect listening, I'm pretty sure you want to do a cool job, make something awesome, right? You want to get no magazine while profiting for yourself or your company, mm -hmm. right? In order to do that, one great thing is to turn your clients into construction contracts, right? Then you need to know how to run your construction jobs well and also make a profit. The problem is there is a lot of detail, a lot of steps to that process, and it might make you feel like failure is inev inevitable and it's not worth the risk. But we think as architects it's wrong that you know how to design a building, you take on huge risks, you spend countless hours on a project, and a lot of times you get paid the least for the hours that you've put in. We've been there before, we've built a whole bunch of things, we've done a bunch of architecture projects. So in our Architects to Builders course at Architects to, uh, Guide to TO, not the number, we teach you how to save yourself thousands and create thousands of dollars in profits for you. So go to that website, enroll in the course, watch and apply the strategies, the resources, and the guides we give you, and grow your business and unlock your profit by mastering these skills. Architectsguide2.com. Do it today. Do it today. Yep. Make it happen. And Check it out. <clears throat> if you pass the contractor's test, uh oh, little alert. Upset alert. March Madness is coming back tomorrow, baby. Upset alert right now. The contractor says we go over how to study, how to do all that. I will, s and, and if you pass it and you enroll the course, I'm sending you a $100 check. I'm sending you a $100 check. It's going to be signed by Al Gore. Yeah. Al Gore. It is. It actually will be signed by me. So that's, that's cool for you, Huge. I guess. Huge. That's assuming they care. <laughs> but yeah. whatever. Yep. Al, I have some questions from architects I'd like to read to you. I have some answers. New segment I just made up today, questions from architects. I dug these out of the, the wonderful Entree Architect community. Shout out to Mark LePage. We will actually be on Mark's podcast, I believe. Let me look it up right here before we get into it. I think next week we record with Mark. I'll look we do. Up. Look at that. Next, next week we record with Mark. I have no idea when he's going to publish that, but shout out to him uh, and everybody in the Entree Architect community. So... These are, I'm not going to name names, but uh, I thought these would be good to read. So, Al, here we go. Number one. Okay. I just got this text from my niece who just bought her first home. Okay. Do you know anything about random, she says, and my niece says, uh, do you know anything about random old house things? Like random things that were built into the house. And then the post, the person who posted the question says, and that sums up what my family quote and then in brackets and most people know about what we do so <laughs> hi hi niece 
whatever your name is. Yeah. Hey, I've been in a lot of old buildings. Yeah. Uh, what's there's a lot of randomness that happens. A lot of additions that are uh, kind of pieced together. Yeah. Uh, a lot of errors and randomness that's made. So, yeah. What do you got? Ex- okay. Yeah. So, so that that's a good answer, right? Yeah. I mean, that's like uh, cordial, and you're not being uh, condescending, mean to your niece. right? Yeah. Here, here's the thing. Here's why I picked out that question. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> why don't architects? ask themselves mm. a question after getting a question like that from a higher level perspective. And the higher level perspective is why don't people know what we do, how we do it? Whose fault is that? How do we remedy that? And and make it so that like, I don't believe it's people's fault for asking those kind of questions. Like, why are you going to fault them for that question? I, I wouldn't. And actually, I wouldn't even take it like that because I have two friends that are doctors. One is a real doctor. One is <laughs> has his PhD. <laughs> Still I look di- doctor, though. <laughs> I direct both. I direct my medical questions mm-hmm. equally to both and put them both in the same text so that the one that's not a real doctor can answer before the real doctor. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure my questions have nothing to do also with what the real doctor's job is. You know what I mean? Like, I think he fixes bones and I'll, I'll be like, what is this lump? He's, you know, that's a, uh, what did I have? Uh, Assist? No, no. The appendix. Uh, um, where I had to have surgery. Oh, Hemorrhage? Yeah, no. Uh, uh, God. Pe- hernia. Pe- hernia. They're like, that's a hernia. I was like, okay, I'll go get that checked out. Got to get that done. Um, so part of what architects do is rehab new buildings, old, old buildings. So it fits in line with what they do. You know, like, it fits in line. Yeah. I I think we need to, um, for me anyway, it is with with questions like that. People, pe- we, the, I'm going to blame the profession and the and all the professionals collectively. And uh, if, if the AIA is supposed to serve as this institution to alleviate these kind of questions and educate the public about what an architect does and sell the value of an architect, well, then all of that is failing. No, but I'm going to respectfully disagree. Don't architects know about... Random things? In, in they a, better. Yeah. Yeah. So then so then, what's the problem with the question? Yeah. Uh, well, and that sums up what my family, quote, and most people know about what we do, meaning they don't know about what we do. Well, I think they're assuming that you do know about the random buildings. So is, is your idea about what you do not aligning with what you really do? Well, no, no, because that guy is assuming that that niece is only, she's only asking about that because that, that's in, in her life. Mm-hmm. It, <clears throat> she could have, I bet you that niece could walk down Chicago and be like, Hey, I, I saw this skyscraper, blah, 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 blah. Talk about skyscraper. Well, maybe he doesn't know much. He knows probably some forces, things like that. I, I don't know. I think he's t- yeah, he's taking one question and then taking it it the wrong way. Yes, agreed. Okay. Yeah. Number two. Anecdotally, has anyone else noticed filament light bulbs lasting longer than LEDs? I've noticed this in a couple instances. Seems odd. Uh, I have I have also noticed that. I have noticed the reverse, but more of it I've noticed the filaments lasting longer than LEDs. Um, yeah. Anecdotally, <sighs> I've said it before on the podcast and I'll say it again. We did our whole house in LEDs. We have since replaced them with either complex fluorescence or, or filament light bulbs because they all failed. And then even in, even in our building upstairs, um, we had several of the can lights, which are LED hard, hardwired, like we've replaced them. So I'm just not sold yet on the technology, and I do, and so if other people are anecdotally seeing that, seems like it's kind of trending. Seems like it's I don't know if it's this idea that LEDs are going to solve all of the energy problems and everything like that. It's like man, we're throwing a lot away. Yeah. There's some equation that uh, tracks the reliability <coughs> of a product in mm-hmm. relationship to the volume that it's created at, and while uh, LEDs are, I mean, you can buy them anywhere. Think about how many fluorescent bulbs have been 
made. Probably like a billion. Who? Yeah, bill. Yeah, billion. Right. Sure. So like, ten million a year. Like I don't know. Right. Something like that. And if if LED is is only at like one million, or they've only made five million or ten million, that's like one percent of all the fluorescents that have ever been made ever. Um, it could be like that could be true that because with the LEDs, mm-hmm. what we've heard a lot is like, oh, there's this thing and it has to switch and then it goes into the LED and the LED actual light works, but it's the piece it's, before it's that. It's the piece before that. Yeah. Like the converter yep. or inverter. Yep. Or so it's like, oh, you've only, once you make four times as many as you're making now, the instances will go down because you've just become an expert over it where they've had. 80 years of, of regular light yep. bulbs, right? To get this down and only 10 of the new. Yeah. I still love LEDs, but let's just be honest about it. Okay. Number three, what, uh, what do you do to manage your new project pipeline, Alex? Any tips or tricks? Oh, trying to find a way to space out the work that comes my way. Okay. This jump. is a segue. Uh, I, I know you're, you got more No, no, go ahead. Jump this. ahead. Jump ahead. We got more after this. It's fine. Thank you. So we have been looking into this because business is booming. Woo! <clears throat> There's so many projects coming in. It's it, it's no longer manageable. I want to talk about two ways to to manage it. I'm gonna record this, and Lance will um, put my screen hopefully up on the for the YouTubers. Hey, I was able to do the last week when we put up the examples of the 3D printed houses. Oh, you are so good. I really feel like. Al should be watching YouTube at night. I, I himself. Do. I don't watch myself, but maybe I you should. You should make your kids. Yeah. My my wife is like, why are you on TV right now? Like if, if like when we were on TV, yeah. right? And put it on TV or like, uh, uh, I don't know, meeting with the city or something like that. She's like, this is weird. Why are you on television, boy? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Monograph. Monograph up their game. They probably did this a while ago. We reviewed it and looked at it a long time ago. One of the things that they did that I think is absolutely critical is that they have their own embedded timer, right? So now you don't have have to have an outside timer. You can do it right in monograph and you can set up your projects, right? So I have, if you're looking on YouTube on the screen, I have a couple test projects, right? Mm -hmm. On my dashboard. So I can see those test projects, right? Then I can go to project, and I can click on one of those test projects. And then I broke it down into the phases, right? Uh, schematic design, design development, um, and construction documents. I must have left my timer on because... You're still timing? What? You're still timing right now? Well, it says... No, I paused it. Oh, I, I see what you mean. It. I see what you mean. But this is what's great is that you can put in your length that it's going to take, like, let's say two months to do it, right? Mm-hmm. But then also you have a money bar too. How much money is in there. So it's broken down into phases. You can see how much you build out. You can assign different team members. So you can have multiple team members on that project so that you, you, everyone is aware of the time constraints and the money constraints that you're in. Right? So that is great. Check that out. Uh, Monograph also has a whole bunch of other stuff. So you can bill from them. They have a report. Uh, you can do reports. You can do invoices, all that. The other one I want to talk about too is that if you just want a timer, there's Toggle. Toggle is a free timer that you can use, right? But when you're getting to this point that this question is getting to you, multiple projects, multiple team members, you got to go to Toggle Pro. Toggle Pro allows you to do the similar thing where you have a project. You can break it into phases. You can have team members do that. So it's, and you can assign same thing, hours, right? We just relate hours and, and, and money to it too. Um, so either one of those. And, and let me clarify, it's T-O-G-G-L. There's no E. That's it. Yep. Yep, because there is a toggle with an E. That's something totally different. I think it's like yeah. finance. Yep. I don't know. It's not a timer. It's something else. Bingo. Go look at those two. See what works for you. Uh, both of them have a free trial. Just know Toggle Pro is more answering this question so to answer the question because al kind of answered it is i nailed it i nailed it i think he went to specifics Uh, but what you need to do is you need to set up a you need to have a piece of software that's going to allow you to set up a system and the story and then and then you have to do that right yep um 
as far as timeline goes, <clears throat> one there's two different ways how to do this, right? So we are as we speak and as we record, we are going after a giant project, and I I'm hoping we get it. Uh, it would make my Friday. But um, in that one, the timeline is so tight. What I used is, and we also use, is Monday.com. Monday.com is a great piece of software. It's all online. And so what you can do is uh, you you can put in tasks. You can assign the tasks to people. Then you can have dependencies on the tasks, right? So let's say, like, I can't do X until Jerry does Y. Uh, Larry can't do Y, y until, until Jerry until Jerry does it. And then they're all linked and then you can instantly have a Gantt chart. And so what I did to uh, hopefully reassure this client that we're on top of it and putting it together so that we could meet their very strict deadline with this first deliverable is worked with Monday.com and put all that together with my teammates and I set up a team of four. So even with architecture, because normally we do Monday.com for construction. Construction. Project. So I use it for our, for our architecture what now. You? So so the, the, basically that, that that's what you got to look at when you're doing all that stuff, right? Okay. Number three. Uh, four, is there any universe where it would be okay to ship the work prior to being paid? Uh, so, sh- uh, Al, send me the drawings. You're done now, right? I'm going to go submit for permit. My house is in southeastern Colorado, and they they want paper copies. Okay. Uh, this question, you've if you're asking this question, you've already messed up. Boom. Look at this guy. You've already messed up because Lance, <clears throat> you are the client. Ask me to design a house for you. Hey, uh, I wonder if you design a house with random things attached to it. <laughs> Can you call me by my name? I'll get it done. Gore. I'll, uh, oh, sorry. 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 Thank excuse you. me. I'll get it done. Gore. I, uh, I bought this piece of land. I want a random house with random things. I can get that done for you. Can you? <laughs> Here is my proposal. Here's the process. Here's how it lays out. Uh-huh. Here's your total. Here's the estimated time frame. Yeah. Um, to get started, please sign the contract and send a deposit check. All right. Uh, by mail or credit card? You're making this too difficult. Just follow along. Say yes. Play. Okay. Here's my... Here. Yeah. I'll get it done more. Perfect. Oh, and then here's throwing money at you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I've done the first phase. I sent it to you. Here's an invoice. Oh, I Paid. Perfect. I've done the second phase. Here you go. Here's an invoice. Man, I just paid. Perfect. <clears throat> hey, I'm done with the project. You want to submit it. Can I have the drawings? Oh, this guy has literally been paying all the time. Um, it seems to work out. He already put the deposit on. Uh, sure. I'll send it to you. Or, hey, can you pay this deposit? Then I'll give it to you. Yeah. But the whole question was, is in any universe, is it ever acceptable? I, I can't remember what the question was. Like. Is there any universe where it would be okay to ship the work prior to being paid? Yeah. 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 Because all the other ones, remember I said, here is the deliverable. Here is the invoice. And then here's the one thing I would add to that too is, <clears throat> in almost all jurisdictions now, you're going to get at least one round of comments back from the building department. Uh, almost all of them, Right. So one uh, tip that I would give for that is, let's say you did in good faith. Yeah. We went through the process here in with this mock, you know, acting that we did about he's been paying on time. She's been paying on time. It's been fine. It's been fine. Yeah. It's fine. Here's your drawing. Go submit for the permit. You, I would withhold addressing those comments that you get back until you get paid. That would be a good cross check, right? Yep. And you don't say it up front. It's just. Let's say let's say they're like, oh hey, by the way, uh, the building department just needs you to add this one thing to the drawings, and then they said they're ready to issue it, and then you go and then make sure double check your invoices and go, oh no problem, can we please take care of this last invoice? Yep. And then that's where how you tackle it. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Um, because some people, I know some clients, uh-huh. very rarely have gotten really offended. This actually wasn't mm-hmm. from me, but from other people, they said the oh. This person doing this report wanted a hundred percent before they sent it. And he said, like, that's unacceptable. Like because they already paid a deposit, like, give me the report. You know, like what are you doing? So just so you know, you you might turn people off, but if you went through that process, it should be no problem. Right. What is I the mean, what that, is the process? What is the precedent before all of it? Yeah. I think that was a good way to multiple think. Multiple times I've done that. Here is your submit this to the building department and here's your invoice. Yeah. And all of them are 
normally net 30. So like if you're not running net 30 or net 15, yeah. one, one, that's standard business practice. Yeah. So Everywhere. then you're saying to them, uh, hey, here's an invoice. You have 30 days to pay it, which they might be planning on it. I'm not even going to give you your last thing until, I mean, you can, you, you can run a ship like that. We haven't for 10 years. It's been fine. It has been fine. Yep. Okay, last one. Without going into much detail, we had a set of drawings into the township with permits and had several inspections completed using those sets. The contractor is a design slash build architect and decided decided to redraw our plans, modify the structure, and then submit his own drawings to the township at the end of the project for plan modifications he made without notifying us. He is trying to get us to sign over a letter releasing the design and liability at the end of the project, which we did not sign for a change of architect. <clears throat> Has anyone else experienced anything similar? Any suggestions on how to proceed? Thank you in advance. Al, get her done, Gore. That is a yellow to red flag. Yellow to red. Right? I mean, it might go straight to red. I don't have all the context, yeah. but um, what? 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 That's uh, so, so, so it's asking, hey, we changed the stuff. Not only do I want you to sign off on that, but then also sign off on all liability? All uh, he's trying to oh, get he's us, an architect. He is, yeah, he is trying to get us to sign over a letter releasing the design and liability at the end of the project. Oh, releasing the liability. Releasing himself from liability. I think that's what it's getting at, which is insane. So then it's a red flag. What I would do is what I would do is I would write a for, I would write a formal letter releasing our firm of it. Yes, I interpreted it that way. That I, I'm the architect, and always. I've done that, I'll and I've done that before. Yep. And here's what you do: is you send it right to the building official, straight, and you copy that architect and you copy the owners. Yes, yes. If it's asking to release yourself, who drew it? Like I, I think, well, one, not only did they ask you, but even if they didn't ask you. You could say, hey, they changed this in the field and did their own drawings. Building department, I am letting you know that uh, this was not approved through me. I, you know, like I'm releasing my <laughs> liability because they did all yep. this. Yeah. Yep. So. Maybe even maybe even have your attorney read it over. Can't hurt even though ugh, attorneys. Okay. What do we got next, Mr. Gore? Well, we had the monograph and toggle preview, but we already did that because it worked in seamlessly. Um, just like those two programs. Just kidding. <laughs> and Monday.com. Don't forget Monday.com. Yep, yep. Check that out. Love that piece of software. So next we have Airy Jeopardy. Let's bring down the crew. Number one, obtaining a building permit is A, a guarantee the design is error free. Correct. B, Transfers liabilities for code compliance errors from the design professional to the permitting jurisdiction. C. Does not shift responsibility for design deficiencies from the licensed design professional to the building official. D. Relieves the architect from liability related only to ordinance not affecting life safety. Mm -hmm. Do you need to repeat? That's a wordy one. You good? Jason's good. Rubinator? She doesn't know. Letter. Nice. Okay. Let's see it. All right. C, we C, C, correct. You are all correct. You are all correct. Wow. Number two, fatigue failure is a failure mode associated with A, stress reversals, B, long slender columns, C, high temperatures, D, long-term compression loading. E, skipping leg day. Skipping leg day. You don't want to do that. Okay, all the answers one more time. A, stress reversals. B, long slender columns. C, high temperatures. D, long-term compression loading. We have D, D, and D. The correct answer is A, stress reversals. Back and forth, back and forth. I thought it was uh, leg day for sure. Dang it. <clears throat> Question three. Emergency escapes and rescue openings shall have a minimum clear opening of how many square feet? Is it A, 8.2? Is it B, 9? Is it C, 7.3? Is it D, 
5.7. One person was looking directly at me the whole time, and I think they were trying to guess based off of my reaction of saying it. Mm. Is that what you're doing? All right. <laughs> DDD, you all are correct, 5.7. Okay. Don't. I was looking at you waiting for you to say 5.7. I feel like somebody has three okay. answers right. Jason? No, we all uh. tied, too. Okay. All right. But it's. It, That's true. Yep. Ignore exceptions. <laughs> uh, question four. This one's going to trick you guys up. Mm-hmm. How many inches should a beam or joist bear on metal? Is it A, one, B, two, C, 1.5, D, three? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Can you read it again? Yes. Uh, how many inches should a beam or joist bear on metal? Is it A, 1, B, 2, C, 1.5, D, 3. And we have D, B, C, C. I believe we have a winner. The answer is C, 1.5. Would you get three? Three. And then what? Two, one, something? Yep. Two, Ross, two. where are we eating? Where are we eating? Hadn't considered. Pistachio. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was the idea yeah. this morning. Remember, if you are looking to uh, extend your foundations and make a more sturdy foundation, go to architectsguide2.com. Architectsguide2.com. Thanks for listening to today's episode if you didn't already know, but you already know because you're watching on YouTube. Inside the Firm now has a YouTube channel where you can actually watch the episode if that's what you prefer. Subscribe now for a chance to win a piece of Inside the Firm merch. If you prefer podcast style, it would mean the world of us if you could leave a five-star review if you enjoyed this episode. That is how more people find the podcast and how we can spread more value. But no matter which category you fall into, if you're looking for the latest updates on Inside the Firm and special content, Follow us on LinkedIn or Facebook at Inside the Firm or Instagram. Thanks for joining us. Inside the Firm for another great episode.